Is everybody voting members? That's all. We're going to make sure that although all 10 of us are voting members. Well, we need nine voting members. It looks like there are three red members and all of our members are voting members because we're all alternate for each other. All right, so we have three. Sue and I are voting members from my board. Stacy's voting member. Sarah, you are correct? Yep, I am. And Aaron's the chair he is. So yeah, I think we're good, Don. And it, Kathy, Mary Ann joined. She's an alternate, so she'd be a voting member also, correct? Yep, she's an alternate to Mike. And Mike was at basketball tonight as well. He's coaching. So he, so Mary Ann, if she comes, will be here in his place. Okay. All right, guys, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? I would like to add a executive session for personnel. <clears throat> Um, do that um, right after other. Um, we don't need a timekeeper. Um, approve the minutes of Monday, December 20th. So move. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion on the minutes? All right. Hearing none, so move. Um, board correspondence. Do we have any board correspondence to share? I don't have anything. Um, board development series. That's just a placeholder. Stay tuned. Um, I believe we will be able to start up again in March. The BSBA said that we would be a priority SU. So I believe March will be ready to roll. Okay, public comments. Is there any public on tonight? No. Public comments. Jamie, you are up. Oh, uh, so you have my uh, report in hand. Um, it, uh, we're getting ready to vote in three districts, uh, town meeting. Um, the Australian ballot. Uh, all those warnings have now been approved. I think um, the only ones that are left to sign now are Rudd. Um, and just a reminder to get those signed. Uh, the mailers are put together in Stratford and Sharon um, and are getting ready to head to the printer with the town books. And uh, the White River Unified District, we will create our own. Um, and that is due to the mailer by Friday. So um, just a reminder to, we've got everything other than, I don't know for certain if we have Andrew, the board letter yet uh, from White River Unified District. So just a reminder to get the board letter to Tara. Um, as I said, I gave Tara tonight off. Um, if folks have questions under her report, I'll, I'll entertain them. Um, the, the work that we were doing with UVEI around the uh, analysis of data, I've just been really pleased with. Uh, we met again um, on Thursday uh, for an hour and a half, faculty and administration met. Um, and it was really good to see the building share their, what their learnings have been um, and learn from each other. And we're doing this virtually, which is a bummer. It was really great when we were all together at the start of the year um just to have that positive energy we have planned to do kind of a hybrid model but we've been virtual since um and then the only other thing i'll add is um that we did um pivot i believe pretty successfully um to the new procedures and, and protocols around uh, covid 19 um and to have a more responsive notification system um, and to be able to provide uh, more testing materials for our families in schools. So we did get a shipment of about 2,500 tests today. I expect that we'll continue to receive those weekly. Um, and so we will be able to pivot here shortly from having to continue to do antigen testing in our actual schools first thing in the morning to hopefully uh, moving direct uh, fully to take home testing. Um, and so that should that should be uh, 
a good relief for our nursing staff and, and COVID response team um, in that regard. So uh, I met with the SU nurses and principals this morning, uh, just to review updates and things. Folks seemed in pretty good spirits. Um, and I feel like, you know, we, we remain uh, steadfast uh, in combating this and uh, moving to a place where this really is starting to become an endemic from a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I expect that we should see our data hopefully start to level off. I don't know how many of you uh, go to the SU dashboard on a regular basis. We do update that daily. Um, we have pretty high positivity rates right after the holiday, um, but I do expect that we're gonna start to see those decline. Um, and so that's good news. And I'll take any questions folks have. Anybody? Okay. okay. So Anda? Yes, good Anda. evening. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, again, you all have my report as well. Uh, I don't think there is uh, anything that should be a surprise in there. Um, you have been looking at data that is uh, kind of our social emotional data in your individual district boards throughout this month. Um, and that's an important part of our MTSS system, uh, understanding that data as well as our academic data. So um, you likely have seen and talked about that with your, with your respective principals. Um, this month is also our uh, academic assessment window in, um, for the winter. And so we've been uh, working with teachers and teachers have been working with students around uh, assessing uh, primarily reading and math uh, in all of the um, kind of K through 10th grade uh, in this window um, with these more universal um, benchmarks. And then, and you'll look at that data in February, both at the district level and then also at the SU level. Uh, and then as we um, talked about in December, we have been doing, um, starting to do some more targeted professional learning with our specials or essentials teachers uh, and um, met with them and have teacher leaders within each of those groups who will be helping to um, facilitate their own uh, professional learning kind of communities with job alike folks across the SU uh, in the spring. and. Um, and use that to really target, make sure that they're getting the, the professional support and, and learning that they need within their own content areas, uh, sometimes while also keeping them connected with their buildings on the other early release days. So balancing those two needs uh, of folks who are um, in those content areas. So that's the, that's the extent other things um, are reflected, I think, in the superintendent's report. So I'm happy to take any, any questions that you have. Thank you, Anna. Um, Ray. Oh, no, Annette. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I checked off the wrong one. Sorry, Nat. <laughs> That's okay. Hi, everyone. Um, all, you also have a, a copy of, of my report. Um, so we're continuing to, you know, offer some really robust professional development um, for, you know, all of our special ed department, special educators, OTs, PTs, um, SLPs, and even our paraeducators. Um, we have started our little reading uh, cohort, um, which they'll be having their second session um, uh, this Friday, um, which is a three-part session with Jeannie Feinberg. Um, so that'll be fantastic to kind of grow um, our service delivery model um, and really have some special ed uh, paraeducators uh, specialize um, in a content area with some real deep training, which will be a fantastic help. Um, also, um, our alternative classrooms um, are still, um, you know, thriving and doing really well. Um, as part of that, we've been um, continuing to work closely with the Central Vermont Supervisory Union around a collaboration for kind of expanding um, what we can offer for um, a small amount of our students that have cognitive or functional disabilities. Um, and so we're kind of uh, almost in the final stages with that. We're still reviewing and drafting uh, an MOU. Um, but with that, 
uh, collaboration um, comes a possible move um, from having the alternative middle school classroom uh, be at the Bethel campus at the middle school, um, a possible change to the Chelsea campus um, with the possibility of the, the elementary school there being open. Um, that'll help uh, give that classroom more space. Right now it's very tight um, with the, the number of students that we have. Um, and with the collaboration, um, that group of students will, will become slightly larger. Um, and, you know, middle school bodies can be, get big. And so they definitely need more space. Um, so that'll be a great help um, moving it to Chelsea, as well as with the collaboration, um, just the, the location of the collaboration only being about eight miles apart from each other. Um, instead of, you know, 30 plus miles, um, that would just help with that collaboration piece. Um, also, um, we have started our um, search for the fall uh, for special educators, um, and we're looking for an SLP and also our intensive base um, program coordinator. We have interviews. Uh, lined up um, with a group of special educators for this Thursday. So um, I'm super excited about the uh, pool of applicants that we have right now. Um, and then next Wednesday, um, we have a pool of intensive programming uh, coordinator interviews scheduled. And again, I'm excited um, about that pool of applicants as well. If anyone has any questions, I'll take those. I just had something. Sure. But just to remind the board, um, and when we had Annette was originally hired to be the intensive programming coordinator, and when Don left, uh, she applied for Don's position, Don McMahon's, and we never actually were able to find someone to fill the intensive programming coordinator. So just that that position really remained unfilled. We had someone within the Wave River Unified District help fill in. Uh, part-time to cover some of those responsibilities, but we never were able to, to find someone to actually fill it um, that was qualified. So it is exciting to hear um, that we have some candidates applying for next school year um, in that position. All right, any questions, guys? All right, all good. Hooray. Okay, uh, everybody uh, putting up a report and I would entertain any questions based on that or anything else. Question. Go ahead. Bill. Ray, what's a document camera? What do you use it for? Bill, so that's uh, like a newer version of an overhead projector. So uh, the teacher uses it to, um, display materials um, that they're talking about as part of their lesson, whatever that is. Um, this year, the with the renewed focus on math, um, the online PD that was delivered for that, it became apparent we needed more document cameras. So that's where that's coming from. Thank you. It's to show uh, manipulatives and concrete materials so that when we're teaching a math, you can use in other subject areas, but in math, as we're trying to make certain students understand concrete materials and manipulatives, uh, having access to a document camera to demonstrate that is really helpful. Onda, Onda, what did you have? I just love document cameras. I just want to add, it's also a great way to um, show for students to show their work to to each other and to their teachers. So it's a it's a nice way for to make student thinking visible. Um, so it's sort of got the multiple purposes, both uh, for for teachers and for students. Nice. Any other questions? Okay. Um, any questions on uh, Tara's report? Jamie said he is ready to field those. I can give an update. As you know, we're still in the search for an accountant. Um, Jason and Tara have been picking up those responsibilities. Um, we did meet with a potential candidate. Um, 
for that position who seemed like they would they'd be really strong um, and a vibrant candidate uh, for us to consider. They won't be available until May though. And so one of the things I'm working with Tara on is just making certain that we're not behind um, in our reconciliation. So know that I'm continuing to progress monitor that if we need to do some contracting service uh, just to ensure that we keep up. We certainly will have the budget to do that just because we haven't been paying our accountant now. Um, but do know that I'm feeling optimistic that we may have someone in place here um, within the next couple months at the latest. Um, so we do have a pretty viable candidate, definitely, that could be available to them. Good, good. <clears throat> um, Carrie. Sure. Um, so I'm going to take you all the way back to summer. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a board report here. Um, so we just want to highlight our summer intervention program. We had a really successful program. We offered four weeks, two and a half hours a day. Um, we had about 120 plus kids participate. Uh, ESY students were largely integrated into those groups, although there were some separate um, ESY groupings. Uh, we had 16 teachers from the SU uh, and four non-licensed teachers uh, working with our students. And we, our goal was to provide explicit instruction um, and, and make it high quality uh, specific to the students' needs. Uh, the feedback I got from the intervention teachers and parents was, you know, they reported high levels of success. They felt like it was a really um, effective uh, intervention program. So I I'm glad that we were able to do that. And we do have funding for 2022 to uh, carry that on. So that was summer 2021. I'll just keep going with summer. We also got back to kind of our where my report go um sort of normal camp last summer if you remember we kind of didn't have covid for <laughs> a little bit there and it was pretty awesome uh we had five weeks of of theme-based summer camp uh at six sites and we had around 300 kids uh not including intervention students um you know, we really focused on um, giving kids an opportunity for voice and choice and leadership opportunities. We got back to field trips, which is always a big sell with our our students. Spent a lot of times out, a lot of time outdoors. We used the outdoor classrooms. Um, we tried to really build a sense of community. Um, we, we had morning rituals and students were given jobs and um, we really tried to build uh, connections and a sense of belonging uh, for our students this summer. And we also had our counselor and training program. We, I think, took a break on that for a year or two because of COVID. And so that was great to get back to that uh targets seventh through ninth grade kiddos who they get a week of training and then they work in our camps with our younger students um and then school year so school year has been going really pretty well uh really we haven't run into a lot of staffing issues that you know i know a lot of programs out there have struggled with um we our numbers are great i I want to say at least half our programs are right where we've kind of always been. And I would say three or four of our programs are larger than they've ever been. Um, so that's great. It does create some capacity issues, but um, but we're glad that, you know, families are utilizing the program. And our staff has um, recently done a conscious discipline training. So we're uh, working on um, developing understanding of that. And we're continuing our learning by uh, doing like a monthly reading assignment meeting, uh, discussing what we read and um, making a goal of implementing a strategy in our programs and then uh, reporting back and kind of sharing with a group. 
Um, the SU, Annette has been, and Anda has been wonderful about uh, including One Planet and all of their trainings. So our staff are definitely making use of those trainings on the half days when we're not running programs. Um, what else I have for you? Uh, we did just kind of finish up, well, uh, late fall, uh, we reapplied for STARS, which is a recognition system in Vermont and for quality child care programs and all of our programs are four out of five stars um the fifth star i think uh we have to get an outside assessor to come in and, and uh, assess our program so i am encouraging my sites to do that so that we can have some five star programs um what else we are doing a counselor and training program for middle schoolers during the school year. We've never done that. We've always done it during the summer. So we're starting to get that underway. And we are starting our um, YPQI uh, process, which is youth program quality um, initiative or something like that. It's an assessment that we use to, um, to evaluate our programs from within. And I think that's it. Thank you. Oh, if anybody Any has questions any questions for yeah. Terry, just thank you. And I, I, I love when you're able to come and present because you run a top notch system. So thanks for, uh, for being on the team and everything you do. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, I can concur with that. Absolutely. Um, question. You sound very, very pleased uh, with what you're doing and your team's doing uh, as far as participation and the quality of programming and everything like that. Um, looking ahead uh, for this spring, are there any challenges that concern you that you're going to need the board help or your superintendent's team help to achieve? How are, we, how are you doing looking forward? Yeah, um, I I think the one thing that we've struggled with during COVID is getting um, enrichment teachers on board. I think two challenges with that. One is that a lot of our enrichment teachers in the past have been school day teachers, and those folks are really tapped out right now. Um, the other part of it is bringing outside, you know, people in the community to the program to lead programs. And a certain portion of those folks are kind of hesitant to get into the schools. So, um, you know, we, I, I expect that to get better as COVID um, kind of recesses into the background here. But um, so that's been one challenge. And I don't know that that's a board, um, you know, that's something that the board can support with. Um, but I, I hope it's just, you know, it's kind of like a COVID related issue that I, I think we'll move through and get on the other side of. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Evaluation Committee, those of you that are on the committee with me, we're, I'm working on it. We've got the contract signed with the VSBA. I'm waiting for them to give me some meeting dates. I touch base. I'm just waiting for some meeting dates so that we can get started with the, the process of um, getting out the surveys and, and what that looks like. So um, more to come on that. Um, negotiations Council. Um, I can speak to that or any one of us here that's on, but it's, it's moving along. I really appreciate the effort, Sarah and Bill and Jamie all put in with, with information gathering and stuff. And we, we feel, I feel very prepared when we go into the negotiations meetings. Um, and it's, I think it's going smoothly and we'll stay tuned. We'll keep you informed. Um, Energy Committee. Um, yeah, and Ray was at that committee meeting as well. Um, the big update I have is that EI has now been in everyone's building um to review and they are going to have preliminary proposals for us in february um not final proposals because well frankly i think they realize we're we're pretty large <laughs> there's a lot of buildings 
as they started, they've spent um, multiple days here with Lyle going through each one. Uh, but they'll start to give us a sense of where our needs may be. Uh, just to update the board, and this was discussed at the Energy Committee, um, that we're really, they're going to be looked to give us an A, B, and C option for each district around like A being, here are the things we really would recommend that you take advantage of because your building needs this. It's urgent. B being, here's uh, how you could take advantage of the performance audit, some ESSER money, energy efficiency Vermont money, and improve your infrastructure. And then really, you know, C would be, here's what you do if you want to make your building state of the art. Um, and so they're going to give us those three options in their final proposal. Um, and then what the energy, um, what the performance audit, you know, the performance contract, it could then offset in regards to those expenses. And then each uh, district can start to have discussion around how they want to pursue this. And a reminder that if we leverage ESSER 3 money, which I'm certain that we will, we have not tapped into that money yet. Um, and that we do have two summers to do this work. Um, they did extend ESSER 3. So it's not just this it's not just this coming summer. It's through the into the fall of 2024. Um, so know that that's underway um, and that, you know, we should start to get some information into boards this coming month. Any questions? Um, under discussion items, we have planning agenda items for the White River Valley Full Board Retreat, which what is the date on that one? That was uh, tentatively scheduled for February 5th. We talked about a Saturday. We talked about wanting to be able to get together in person. Of course, that was back in November. When it looked like it said. So um, <laughs> I just thought, I mean, that's on there for you guys to discuss and, and think about yeah. and how you want to go about it. Um, do we want to talk about ideas of what we'd like on the agenda? Or would everybody like to email and we'll put together a list of what people think would be good on the agenda? I, I for one, would want to talk about how we can work more together as boards, not just as a retreat, but how can we um, meet more and do things together more? Um, but that's just one idea. Um, so if you have ideas, we can go through them now or people can think about it and shoot me an email and I'll, I'll put the list together and bring it back to the next meeting. Well, it wouldn't be the next meeting. Yeah, because February 5th is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's next month. Um, Being I, where we're at now in COVID, do we think February 5th is too soon? Uh, I don't. We've talked about this for a while, and I do think others we could be it. Yeah, I think if um, I wouldn't. Person, it's too early. Yeah, I wouldn't want to meet. I love you all, but would not want to meet in person with you anytime soon. Uh, especially given that the numbers are declining, and I feel like if we push it out by even a month or two, we could be in much better shape. Cross fingers that the next mutation is not creeping up as we speak. Not Stacy, not positive Thanks, thoughts. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> positive thoughts here. <laughs> um, it also entered into my mind as as uh, the, at least the Stratford board is going through some change and uh, people that maybe <clears throat> after the so I was the one who said let's schedule for February and get it you know da 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 but we'll have two new people at least one new person on this board um, and maybe two. So I want, I wonder if it makes sense to wait until after um, our meetings. Well, I think for FBUD, um, we're potentially going to be having our meeting in May. And I know um, Stockbridge Rochester doesn't meet until May. So I think we would be pushing and it pretty Grandville far. Hancock. And Granville Hancock, we would, we would be pushing it pretty far if we, if we waited for that, Sarah, because um, I, I don't think and I don't know what other people, I think some other towns are going Australian ballot and they're going to hold their date, but it doesn't look like that's what we're going to do. Um, but I do think February, like, um, maybe February 5th is a little too soon because it's like in a week, two weeks. I mean, I, I, I welcome, I welcome a, a 
a Google Google gathering as well. I just feel like there's topics that we, you know, we we do the punch list in their meeting and we get going, but really don't actually get to talk to each other very much. Right. And I, I, I think that's really what we're talking about. I think we could get we could pick up we could pick four broad topics right now, whether it's, you know, education, budgeting, you know, whatever, board board dynamics and SU by dynamics, four topics right there. And we could sit down, schedule it, make sure it's only last two hours. And um, and just I, I would welcome a sort of free ranging discussion with other board members um, on on those four topics, at least. Um, and, and, and not make this like, OK, put everything's got to happen in this one retreat. Maybe this is the one of two that we have. In other words, make let's make it easy. Let's make it easy. Let's make it um, uh, and, and and accessible. I would be great game for that. I love chatting with all you guys. So um, I, I think if people are, are down for just having an open discussion um, and we do it virtually because we don't know where things are right now and then come back later when we can do in person, um, maybe even do a picnic or something because it'll be warmer. I'm, I think that's totally an option. And I think it's really good for us to talk to each other in not our own little bubbles. Um, Can we get a straw poll, sort of a, everyone who'd like to do it? I mean, that's always the clearest way. Just let me know, yes or no. Get a thumbs up, everyone who's interested in trying it. February two hours and February fifth. And did wait before I can vote. Uh, would it be morning or afternoon? I think the previous notes said that we had talked about morning. I would prefer morning. Morning would work for me, so I would be thumbs up if it was morning. February <laughs> say what nine to eleven ten to noon yeah and make it so that people if they can't get there at nine they can they can pop on at ten and, and jump into where we're at you well, know only give an hour give an hour i mean i think the point of this too is to get to get our board chairs to say hey show up for this this is important to get to know we're an su um, and to see all the faces. And I think that, you know, that's our work before the fifth. And I think we need to make the decision tonight to make the fifth work and be successful. So I'm a thumbs up, as you probably know. All right, Stacy. Um, I'm kind of midway. Um, I will be available if I can, my kid has uh, cross country ski races on weekends. So sometimes they are on Saturday mornings. If not, I will uh, oh. turn up. I also am suffering from a little bit of Zoom burnout. I spend the thought of spending Saturday morning on Zoom is less exciting to me, but I will be there if I can. Lisa? Aaron? Aaron, are you a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay. Rodney? Shannon, Don, Sue? Sure. Well, th thumbs up from Sue. Sarah? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any? Did I get everybody? I can't see everybody on the screen, but if there's any big loud objections, let them out now. If not, we're going to see you on February 5th at 9 o'clock. Um, do we want to pick a few topics? Uh, go ahead, Susan. Yeah. Well, for me, retreats are not are, are different than regular meetings. So I, I want to get out of the you know the punch list. Uh, I agree. Type thing, and I want to talk about you know processes and how we how we can do things better. Maybe how we can support the SU better. Mm -hmm. um, those type of things, and and um, you know how how. I mean, we spend, a, you know, at least one night a, a month together um, and sometime. Um, yeah. So how can how can we how can that really be a benefit? You know, how how can we improve that so that we're um, we're we improve, improve that, I guess. Shannon, um, I would like to talk to talk about um, moving forward in our COVID response. I think we've been doing this for two and a half 
years now. Um, or I don't even like it's still March 2020 to me, right? So I think we've been doing this forever. And is our approach working? Are there new things we could be doing? What should we be thinking of moving ahead as we are transitioning to watching this for the next five years instead of responding to it in the moment constantly? I think it's a huge challenge for our schools. Let's let's talk about it. Right. And and that's right. Yep. So you got three topics. We got three. We got three. So we have three topics. Do we want to go with that for our first shot out of the box? Does anybody think have any other burning desire to talk about? I I think it'll range a bit. Yeah. You know, as we get on the topic, I think we'll, and people start feeling comfortable talking. Hey, you know what? That's 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 us. That's we dealt with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's go there. And I think that's that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an open exchange of ideas um, and and getting to know each other a bit better through this process and our boards, what our yeah. boards are facing. All right, so we have a date. A um, date. Would it be possible? I mean, I, so I, I'm not um, I, I, I'm not out in the public very much, so I don't know exactly how this all works. But what if we did? Um, Pre, pre, you know, the antigen test prior to coming. Would would we be safe then to do meet in person? I think one concern. This is Lisa. One concern I have about that because we all come from different communities and places, mm -hmm. is that then if somebody tests positive two days later, we're all then close contacts. Okay. So I love the idea. Um, not quite it, yet. It feels like we're not quite there. Thanks. Yeah. Stacey? Uh, I just wanted to note, I just got the invite from Ray, which is great, but it's a lot of people. So while I really appreciate the idea of keeping it pretty free form, um, I feel like we should be prepared to like break out into smaller groups if, if we really actually want to get anything done, um, given the number of people we have expected. Yeah, maybe we come up with breakout rooms. Maybe I can talk to you, Jamie, about, we'll talk about a format and, and well, and Kathy, I think it's going to, you know, we're going to have to go through you some to some extent to make, especially through the Zoom format, I think, to recognize people to speak. Yeah. It gets, it, you can't hear anybody. We'll have to make sure people know to use the raise your hand and yep. and I'll try to keep track and call on people. We'll, and, and like you said, this will be our test one to see how this goes and we'll figure it out as we go along. We don't we, get to hang out with each other for a couple hours, so it'll be good. Yeah. We did some flexible grouping for our board retreat and we're a much smaller group, but I felt like it was really successful. Um, and Jamie and Andrew um, put that agenda together and I felt like we all had an opportunity to talk and share ideas, but it was an effective use of time um, and allowed us to connect. Um, so I just am in support of that kind of agenda. Are you thinking we would choose beforehand which topics we would want to get into or right when you go to the meeting you choose them um it, group. It, there were sort of themes and we moved around and touched on each i'm not remembering exactly but um i got to talk with everybody who was there i'm not sure if we could with the big group but um i i guess what i'm trying to say is i Trust our leadership to make something really worthwhile out of that time. Okay. Great. So you said? Okay. Um, uh, Shannon. Shannon um, asked to have the vaccination slash testing of employees added to the agenda tonight. I wanted to speak to that. Correct, yeah. Shannon? So, hi. Um, so, <laughs> As controversial as it is, um, vaccine mandates have come up at our board meeting. I'm sure it's popped up at other board meetings as a thought. Um, and certainly vaccinations are for everything else that you vaccinate children for are required for our kids to go to school. Um, we're not there yet with COVID vaccines because they aren't FDA mandated, uh, FDA approved, fully approved. Um, for people under 16, the they are FDA approved for people over 16. 
And so the question was, do we set a mandate that our staff needs to be vaccinated? At which point Jamie uh, reminded us, of course, that we were forgetting that a lot of the staff in our buildings are SU staff. And so thoughts about this should come from the SU <laughs> with remembering the SU staff needs to be included in this. So I've had um, almost a week at home now because I have kids who have COVID who were vaccinated to sort of think about this. And I think there's actually maybe a more creative answer to it. Um, luckily, my business um, decided to continue the federal program um, when it went away in September that allowed for you to take some time off for COVID um, if you were diagnosed with COVID or if a dependent was. And that was a huge relief to me. And I'm wondering if we can use that as both um, a thank you to our teachers, our, a sort of insurance policy for those who are vaccinated and this incentive to get vaccinated that possibly any of our staff, teachers, any of the adults in the building who have provided proof of vaccination, if they develop COVID, which I know is, is completely possible, um, they get their time, the time that they're required to take off, which is three to five days, depending on um, right now, depending on the situation and whether there's a weekend, those three to five days would be not have to come out of their sick time. So if you're vaccinated and you get COVID, you've done everything you can to protect yourself, our students, the community, you still get COVID and have to go out for a few days. I think that the that those shouldn't come out of your own sick time. And I think it's an incentive for our unvaccinated staff to go ahead and get vaccinated. So that's my proposal. Is it sounds like a great idea. I'm just curious, does it um, allow it in the contract? We would have to, uh, I would, if the board wanted to consider this, um, I could approach the union leadership um, and make it into an MOU, if that's something that the board wanted to pursue. Ethan. <laughs> Sorry, I realized I'm not raising my hand, so I'm gonna try and practice now. Um, uh, uh, what's an MOU? So, um, a memorandum of understanding. Gotcha. And it's an addendum to the contract that's yep. agreed up on. Yep. The board. Yep. Thank you. So, no, others, Sarah, go ahead. I was going to say other thoughts. So. Um, I think Shannon, that's a really, uh, creative and, and positive, um, idea and i appreciate it a lot I, i'm still kind of stuck with i want everybody to be vaccinated who comes into our schools and who works for uh for us so um i'm having a hard time getting off that <laughs> well i agree sarah i am there with you 1000 percent. i want every i want every parent who walks in the yeah. school for a basketball game i want everyone to have to hold up a card i don't think we're there and i don't think as a they're still fighting vaccine mandates for everyone in court. I, I don't know. And I think that maybe incentives are a different way to go. I so, so Shannon, I will tell you that when you, if it's legal and possible to do, I felt a lot more comfortable with an incentive for people who are vaccinated than I did for a mandate. And I think, in my opinion, there are a lot of people who think differently than others about vaccines. And we have enough right now. I would hate to alienate any of our staff because they share a different view than us. And you can get COVID if you're vaccinated or not. So at this point, you're, you're taking your own risk because you can get it and spread it vaccinated or not. I'm I, I like the idea of an incentive if you're vaccinated. And I would be more in support of that. Anybody else? Ethan. Um, I just suddenly got the idea though, what if, you know, 
what if either the union or somebody says, well, hey, you're basically without saying it, saying I need to get vaccinated. You know, in other words, and I deserve that, too. I deserve that three day thing and I'm not getting vaccinated. And I'm proud of that. I mean, what if somebody says that? I mean, do we get into. Well, I mean, no, I mean, the language would have to be specific in the side agreement. Um, about vaccinating. They, and if we're doing a side agreement, just so folks know, then that requires the union to agree to it. Um, and this has not been even broached with them, this this type of topic. So, And I would say if they don't agree to the vaccine la vaccination language, then, then no, we don't. This is kind of being written because of that, so. Sue Kay and then Stacy. Yeah, I was going to say, would you make it re would you make it retroactive? I'd almost think you would have to to treat it fairly for people that have come down with it. Um, maybe have used up a lot of their sick time. Uh, are people thinking of just now going forward or making it retroactive? Good question. I'd love to make it retroactive. I'm not sure, Jamie, what kind of headache that would create. Um, well, I mean, we would just we would have to to work with HR. Um, we 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 certainly have a sense of who which one of our employees have contracted COVID, so I think we could definitely do it. Stacy, uh, I just wanted to add that this idea of incentivizing vaccinated people is is not new. Um, National Governors Association has a whole page on various incentivization programs for state employees in almost every state. Um, oftentimes it involved like a cash payout or in New York state, there were like lottery tickets that were purchased on behalf of people. Um, so I feel like we're, you know, we're not being too radical by including this. Um, if anything, I would say like, you know, let's do more to incentivize, you know, if, if this is the way to get around a, the controversy over a mandate, um, then I think we should, I think we should absolutely be going for it. Don. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for bringing it up. I'd just like to point out, how are we going to verify that people, in fact, have COVID? Are we going to ask for a doctor's notes? And if that's the case, we're going to get into HIPAA. Um, so many of the PCR tests that are being run on people are coming back through the school, is my understanding. But if you want the five days, my thought is you would have to submit either a PCR test um, showing that or a doctor's note, you'd have to submit some documentation. Um, and I don't think that violates HIPAA, Dawn. I think that COVID test results have been specifically said they do not violate HIPAA. Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, I do believe that we could request um, certification of a positive test in order to access if that's what the board chose to want to pursue with the union. And some of this language, like I said, we would need to work out um, with our union. We're not gonna be able to decide on the language necessarily tonight. Um, Sarah. Sarah, you had your hand up? I, I did. I guess I, I there, there's quite, quite uh, still a lot of unknown regarding this. Are you, are you communicable on the day that you test positive? Or are you communicable four days prior? Uh, I, there's still just so much unknown. I just feel a little uneasy about the whole process. Thank you, Don. I agree, Don, but we're making them take three to five days off if they're positive. So you have to, you can't come back into the school if you've, if you've got a positive test result. So I don't know. I do know instances of that has happened. We went through it in my house. They couldn't go back to work, even though they weren't sick, but because they tested positive, they were home and there was no pay. It's a federal park that's gone away. Um, Sarah, do you have your hand up still? Yeah, I do. Um, I just was going to say that a memorandum, a memorandum of understanding, MOU, is a negotiated. Um, document and and so it's and so um sue sue i like susan i liked your i thought of um 
um, of, you know, retro, you know, is it retroactive? Is it not? That could all be part of the bargaining process that we do. And that gives us something to sweeten the deal. If the, if the union is, um, not, um, you know, not, uh, not look, looking for, not don't want it. Um, so it's the same process that we're going through on the contract, um, for, with the memorandum of understanding, just so you know. Thank you, Sarah. Lisa. I'm just wondering what number of or what percentage of staff <coughs> is unvaccinated at this point in time, because if we're already at a really high percentage, um, then it seems like a nice gesture, but not necessarily something that we need to spend a lot of time on. Um, but if if we're like we're over 90 percent, Lisa, we're over 90 percent. And in some buildings, as high as 98. Thank you. Jamie, when you say 90%, does that include boosters? Is that 90%? I have not tracked um, boosters at this point. Nope. And does that include all the SU staff that's in the buildings? 90% is everybody we employ across the SU. So, um, I think we could, I think one thing it should go back to our individual boards and have a conversation about how they feel about it this month. And the other part is maybe you could find all the legalities and have a conversation with the union and see if they're even interested in entertaining it. How do people feel about that step? That would, I think that is the next step we would take. Um, Don? I probably wouldn't approach any union reps until we can get it sorted amongst ourselves first. That's all. But don't we need to know if they're even open to it? I, I was, this is Sue. I, but if it's one of those things, if uh, we come back as a group and decide not to do it, you've all, you kind of semi put this carrot out there and then didn't do it. So I agree with Don. It could cause actually bad feeling, ill feelings of this pro potential promise that we decided not to do. So how do we want to move forward? Ethan? I mean, we make a motion. And, and I don't think time's a problem if we make it retroactive. It's not like we're going to lose you know, some people aren't going to get this benefit. If it's retroactive, you'll get it no matter what. Don? Might be a good topic for our February 3rd or February Saturday meeting. If time, you know, just something to talk about. Okay. Um, Sarah? I agree with Ethan. Let's see if the board is, supports it or not. And then, then we know whether we go forward or we don't go forward. Let's do a motion. I think we need to know what, how exactly we're supporting it, Sarah. So what, what is your suggestion? So if there's, so then you have, you know, part of, you have a sub, you and, you know, I mean, Jamie, go, you know, we, we put some, some, we get like the bargaining group together and we what's the memorandum of understanding that we want to come up with? you know it's an initial proposal that will get bargained you come up with an initial proposal if, if this board authorizes the negotiations team or a subcommittee of that team to um to pursue this then you do it okay if not, we don't okay ethan yeah, that's basically it's my same thinking is is uh, you're directing as the board as we're here tonight we're directing mm -hmm. the negotiations committee to pursue the possibility of a three-day um three-day waiver on sick leave for all staff who have been infected okay so is that yeah i'm not sure how it's three days only because some people are getting sick longer than that so so maybe we're talking about capping it but I think with 90 something percent already vaccinated, that basically this is a thank you. You know, we're going to give you your sick time back. It's, 
it, it is just us acknowledging what they have done uh, and giving them a benefit in a way we can give them a benefit. We, the truth I think is, there are still we, people we high, Yeah, we have a high population of vaccinated anyway. So we're not looking to get that many more vaccinated. We're really looking, it feels like, to say thank you to everybody. So I want, can I hear your take on it, Amy? Uh, for me, if we're going to vote on it tonight, what, what do you think? Well, I, I feel like really what you need to do as a board is give a straw poll if you're in support of pursuing something like this. There's definitely language already out there, just so folks know, in other SUs that we can pull from. Um, and it really would be a side agreement with the union on, you know, crediting them back days for those who are vaccinated. And we got to figure out how, what number of days makes sense. Um, I don't, I don't see why they would be opposed to that. Um, so I don't, I don't think that that's going to be a hurdle. And so really, as soon as I feel like you guys have reached a consensus, I think we could get to work on it um, and, and get it done. But I, I don't, I don't know if you're already at consensus or not. We also didn't want it for actions. So. Right. Um, and we haven't talked to our individual boards about it either. Um, I think there's a, a fair amount of us on here tonight, and I think we're offering an incentive, so I don't know that I feel our boards would object to it. Um, Ethan? I think, that, I think that that really sealed it for me. That last one is that I think um, uh, if it is a thank you, a thank you that comes in a month as opposed to right away is fine. You know that I, I think that's that I, I think it's always a good idea to take it to our boards, get our consensus, come back, and that clearly there's a template for this. So action could happen fairly quickly, possibly, once we come back for our next meeting. So shoot for uh, the the February end of February to make a decision, and we'll warn it for action then. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we'll talk. Yeah. our individual boards and then we'll we'll plan on voting on it at the end of february and it, it sounds like retroactive is what makes the most sense if we're going to do anything um we can figure out the number of days and stuff all that i mean i think it's are we saying just retroactive or retroactive and moving forward i think both okay don i think that's a s solid plan um I, I, I would feel uncomfortable speaking for my board tonight because I'm the only one representing it tonight. So I, I can't, can't make that unilateral decision. So Sue and I let's go forward with the plan. Right. I, with you. I think our, our, all of our boards and communities need to hear about it. And um, so we can work on it this month and come back and, and make a, a good vote on at our February meeting and it be warned as a action item. Great. Okay. Um, Thank you. And as, and as far as an actual vote, I don't know. It needs to be a vote. They just have to give the negotiation team the task to develop the verbiage and offer it to the other team. That's all. I don't think it needs to be an official vote. Right, but it's not just That's for the teachers. So it's not just a negotiations thing. It would be for all the staff. That's that's kind of the point. Is that we have SU staff. We have we have you know the people who are serving meals and we have everybody right and the everybody so it's and the negotiation team represents all of those folks shannon so we could do that for you unilaterally oh see i just wanted to bring up that there are non-union staffers in the building right. as well right so That's there's a the support staff there's to, and then right i think we can make we can write something up that is, that is inclusive of everybody Sarah? Non union and people who didn't join the, as individuals didn't join the union are still covered by the, the collective bargaining agreement. But the administration and stuff, they're not union, part of any union. Correct. Okay. So we can work out those details and, and come up with a plan and have something to vote on at our next meeting. Yep. We don't have any action items tonight. Any resignations and retires? 
Um, any other business tonight? Um, we do have an executive session. That I'm going to ask to have just the board on. Uh, probably a breakout room. Right. Yeah, I've got it ready. We just need a motion. You're right. Uh, I'd, I'd move to enter executive dis session to discuss. Kathy, what was the topic? Personal. Personal. Okay. Second. Uh, at 703. All right, so move. We're going to go to breakout, guys. Right. I'd move to return to public session at 756. No action taken. Seconded. All right, so move. Move to adjourn. Second. All right, so move. Thank you, everyone.